Hello everybody! Today I have a video thrifting in San Antonio. We took a bit of a road trip over to San Antonio, which is really not that far from us, to maybe an hour and a half or so drive, and we thought we would head up some thrift stores there. I do find some goodies, but this thrift store was very interesting. This was a Goodwill. <laughs> I don't know the area very well, so this was a Goodwill kind of in the downtown area. I have kind of cropped out that part right there because there were some interesting characters in this one for sure. And later, as I find out, uh, it has its own security guard. So, who had to get called? Very, very interesting times at this Goodwill. But, <laughs> I do find a couple of things here. So, let's see what we see. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Margaret. I make videos all about thrifting and reselling and making money and staying home with my kids to homeschool so that I can, yeah, do all that fun stuff. All right, here we go. Jewelry bags, anyone? Mardi Gras beads? I pass on those. What else do we see over here? I'm hovering, I'm hovering. What am I looking at? Bringing it down. Oh, staples. I was trying to figure out, what are these boxes of? No, they're staples. Don't need that. Don't need that. Little baby shoes, pass on those. Pretty cute though. What else do I find? So, yeah, the toy aisle I'll come back to you in a moment because there was, a, there was a guy talking loudly to himself, we'll say, standing there. So I decided he could have, he could have that aisle for a little bit. Aha, I spy with my eye. Do you see it? It is a toast stand. So I wasn't sure in the moment if it was silver or silver plate, but we're going to talk about that in just a second. I have sold one of these before. The one I sold was silver plate. Uh, and then these are a few that have sold $86, $65, depending on the brand. There are some that, of course, that are more plain that have sold for less. That one, about $40. And I'm going to talk about the marks that I find on that in just a little bit because I come back to it to zoom in on the, the British hallmarks which we can talk about. So if you see them and you, um, so you can try to identify them a little bit. So this is a pewter mug, which initially I thought, okay, that's pretty cool. 10 bucks is steep though. And there was a sold for one similar, uh, but it was best offer taken 42. So maybe it sold for who knows, I don't know, 30, but then there were a lot listed and not a lot sold. So it ended up staying, I don't end up buying it. Same thing with these. These ashtrays are all from Vegas casinos, which I know there are some that can bring in a pretty good profit. What I don't know is which ones. So I do look them up. So some of the ones that do bring in a good profit are like this uh, Las Vegas Flamingo Casino, about $51. There were multiple of those sold. And then there was this one uh, that was the Hotel Last Frontier. There were a few others, but I just wanted to like give you the make the point of, you know, even if you don't know everything about, like, okay, I know there are Vegas casino ashtrays that sell for good money. You don't have to necessarily know which ones. It's hard to remember everything about every item on every single thrift store shelf. So, but just as long as you know, hey, that's something I need to take a minute and look up, uh, then you can get a jump on that. So I did. I looked up the ones that I found there and they were not worth picking up. Same thing with this, like this is a silver plate cake server, Merry Christmas it says on it. Now this one, not really going for a lot. However, there are some that can go for a lot. So I did look it up as well. So like this one, this 1847 Rogers plate cake server, there were a few of those that had sold right around this $69, $70 mark. So again, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, this is something I know I need to look up. So like I say, you can't know everything about everything. But as long as you know it's something that's worth checking out, then it's it's worth checking out. Let me know too if you see anything that I miss because I always miss stuff. Let's see what else do I find here. Again, this thrift store was very interesting. Just the whole vibe of it was peculiar. I, I couldn't put my finger on it, um, especially initially, but maybe it was just the, no, I don't even know. Okay, what do I see over here? There are times that I buy frames. I usually try to find ones that are very unique. Uh, occasionally I'll find ones that are, are like higher end brands. 
but I didn't find any in this particular store. So let's come back over. I think now we're going to come back to the toy section. All clear in the toy aisle. Yes, we're good to go. Okay, so first thing that I find over here is cute little Santa, but he stays. What are some of your favorite toys to sell? They're so much fun, though. You know, people love buying their, their youth back and things that, that make them happy. Here it is. So this was a hamburger thing, but like transformery looking, right? And all the pieces like pull apart and I couldn't quite make out exactly what it was supposed to be. But what I ended up doing is I ended up, you know, breaking the rules of the thrift store and peeling off the the sticker. I don't really think that's breaking the rules, but some sometimes people put that on there. Breaking the rules, peeling the sticker. So I couldn't make out what that was either, honestly. So I peel it off, and it's Bandai is, is the, the brand, brand, which is a pretty, you know, they make a lot of toys and stuff like that. So the only thing I could find out is that there was something similar to this that was a Power Ranger toy. However, this one wasn't exactly the same as the ones that I saw there because, it, you know, one, it was configured a little bit differently and a little bit different pieces the markings were different on the inside but I was like well this is really I mean there was one that was sold for $59 another one had sold for what was it 60 it's about to pop up uh yeah oh $53 however it wasn't the same one that I was looking at and so I couldn't decide if I should get that little hamburger or not now it was missing the one I have right here it was missing some pieces like there was a piece of this I guess that's supposed to be the tomato that's gone and it just wasn't there so maybe for two bucks I probably should have taken a risk on it but I did not I left it behind now what do you make of this pretty cool right is it a radio a heater what have we got it's old whatever it is yeah, I just thought it was pretty cool. I do turn it, and I remember in the moment figuring out what it was, and now I'm like, what? What was it? I think it's a heater <laughs> or something. So, yeah, I ended up leaving this behind too, even though it was super cool. So here's, um, I'm, we're in line. I'm, I'm going to look up the, the hallmarks on this, but there's a guy at the counter. I ended up cutting it out, but the guy at the counter, well, we'll come back to it. All right, the hallmarks. Focus, Margaret. So you see these little stamps here. I'm going to zoom in on that. But British Hallmarks have these little stamps, right? That's different than, you know, in America. They'll put the, the name of, like, Williams and Rogers and Silver Plate and blah, blah, blah. And they'll just have the name of it. And they might say that it's Silver Plate. It might not. Sometimes it'll say 925 or whatever it is. But this one, I zoom in on it. And I know a little bit about British Hallmarks, but not a lot a bit. And what I do know is that when you see the letter, that can indicate the age. And then there's supposed to be like a lion or something that tells you the where it was made or a sade rather and all of this. So here's a site, you know, and it'll tell you like the town mark is that. And then the lion's mark is this. And then the maker's mark. And then, and then the date is usually a letter, but it's got a certain font. And so there are sites you can go to look all this up. And I did that. However, some of the marks on it, I could not figure out for the life of me. And so I did reach out to my friend, Tom. He's got a YouTube channel as well. Tom, the English picker, highly recommend, love him. And um, asked him his opinion on these marks. And as it sh I should realize is that if stamps are cheap in America and people will stamp things that aren't really British or aren't really silver or gold, the same thing applies to British hallmarks. And so these, he believes, are like maybe Americanized versions to make it look fancy and British or maybe like British fakie marks. So, and if I got that wrong, Tom, you tell me because I, I think that's exactly what you said, but I could have misconstrued it completely. But they're not like real marks. And then later, that um, it looks like a tarnish spot on the bottom, but it ended up being where it was kind of peeled away. I still think it can sell, so I still got it, and I'm still going to sell it. So here was part of the, we were having an issue. There was a guy that, that was, they ended up having to call security. He didn't get his discount, and he was very upset. But he did get his discount, as she was trying to explain, and it didn't work out so well. The Like I say, security was called, and 
And eventually we had to, uh, yeah, we got to check out eventually. We'll just put it that way. I decided not to put in that part of the video because it was a bit touchy and dicey and loud, we'll say. Uh, okay, new thrift store. So this is another, uh, I can't remember if this was like a charity type shop, but oh, it was big and lovely and had fantastic stuff. So first thing off the bat that I find are these really cool Ben Sherman shoes. And what I think is really amazing is that they had a whole section for like fancy shoes with fancy shoe prices. And these were not there, which maybe because they're more a British brand. Uh, so these Ben Shermans, now new, I've seen them selling for about $45. So I might not be able to get that much, but there really aren't that many up for sale. So perk for me that maybe I can maybe I can squeeze mine in right around that $40 mark as well because like I say there just are not a lot of them up so yay that might work out in my favor so looking around some more on the next shelf over you can see they've got like one shoe and then the price for it uh, because you, they would have to go in the back and get it for you these are the ones they deemed fancy shoes so I did not buy any fancy shoes those vans are cute though little polka dotty vans I'm a van girl myself. So this one had like a whole back area as well. And they did have jewelry. So I come over to the jewelry counter to see what I can find. Unfortunately, they didn't do jewelry jars or jewelry bags, which you guys know I love. I haven't actually done a jewelry unboxing in a little while. Maybe due for one coming up in the next few weeks. So the next thing I find here are some bracelets. And... I'm not sure if that's Bakelite or not. There were two bracelets that I was on the fence about. Uh, that one looked like it could be like a carved Lucite or Bakelite bracelet. Both of those are kind of... Now, when, when I did the rub test on the skinny one, I didn't really smell very much. However, if you find some Bakelite, it can really sell for good money. So here's a pair of Bakelite bangles uh, that sold for in the 60s. Here's another one that sold for 68 and there's ways to test this. Now, on the spot, what I did was I rubbed them. Well, I ended up rubbing them on Juan's blue jeans because it was it would cause more friction. And it, when you rub them, here, I'm clicking them together <laughs> to listen to them because they, they make a certain sound as well. I have a whole video, by the way, on testing Bakelite and celluloid, uh, and I'll link it here. So, yeah, it was one of the ways. So, and on the spot, I'm rubbing it to get some friction because if you smell it, it'll smell like formaldehyde. So, you need to know what formaldehyde smells like. But it's got a really chemical-y smell formaldehyde. Uh, and so I actually haven't done the simithicone test on it yet, for those of you who know Bakelite. So when I get back home, I need to test those out with the simithicrome, and I always say that wrong, by the way, to, to test uh, out, yeah, if it's Bakelite. So pretty cool. Then, look at all the fun trinkets. So this one was really stocked with lots of really cool stuff. The prices on some of it was a little bit high, for what I wanted to pay, but overall, you know, good stuff. Really nice little vase here, and that's pretty cool too. Now, I, I have shared this on Instagram. I think I made a post as well on my community tab that we are thinking, it's leaning, it's like 90% we're going to make a move. So I'm really being strategic with buying, especially breakables right now, because I'm going to have to move all of my stuff and my inventory, etc., listed and not listed, to a new location. So I'm really trying to be picky, picky, picky about what I buy. So pretty, pretty exciting there. We're, we're looking at um, Colorado. So that's, that's going to be a fun trek for us and fun adventure. I should probably make a whole separate video about that and explaining why. I guess I can give you a hint. I homeschool my kids, as you know, and we like to take road trips and travel and stuff and I want to keep doing that while they are still young and want to do that with us. So that's the goal is to, and we've gone all over Texas. I mean, we've taken so many road trips through Texas. Why not? Right? Okay. Look at this cutie. It's a cute little bisque cow, and it's got the tag still, holy cow. I didn't know the brand when I uh, picked it up, but I looked it up, and they're really cute. And they sell, and it's a Walker Hagen, right, little bisque cow. So one similar to this sold for $20, and that was on auction. I don't do auctions, but there were some other ones of other the little cows in different poses that sold for actually more than that. So, uh, and it didn't have a price, but the lady gave it to me for a buck ninety-nine. 
And now there's this little clown, which I didn't look up, but I just kind of fell in love with it, even though I don't really like clowns that much. But I got it anyway, three bucks. This was fun. It's marked, and I probably should have looked it up, six bucks on that. Mm. Uh, but I left it behind. Look at all the stuff. Look at all the stuff. I love it when the shelves are stocked like this, just packed full of stuff, and you really get to get a good dig in to find the hidden gems that are in there. Tell me if you see something I miss. Let me know. Little bears. Little black bear. That's cute. Oh, that's a cute little silver plate tray, but it was super... You see the rest on it and stuff, so no, pass on that. There's got to be something here. Now, I love these little luminaries like this that has the openings where you could put a candle inside and it, it shows out. But that one actually, on the bottom, there wasn't a place to put the candle inside. little rocker, but it doesn't have like the bottom, the piggy bank bottom. And I've had someone tell me, I can't remember who it was, uh, on one of my other videos, that you can buy from Amazon or someplace like a, a bunch of them of different sizes. So you just have them on hand, which is really wise, actually. Because I come across a lot of piggy banks with no bottoms. All right. I don't see anything. Little kittens are cute. Hmm. I don't see anything here that I want. Those pewter, those pewter candle stick holders are nice, though. Maybe I should have looked at those and seen what they were going for. See anything? Do you see anything? Some more little candlestick holders. Those can do okay if the price is right going in on them. Glass. I don't see anything special there. Holler at me if I missed it because, like I say, I'm still learning. Alright, so I think, okay, maybe lightning will strike twice and I'll find some good silver, silver plate. This is actually Chippendale, as is, it says. Uh, they wanted, was it $14.99? $4.99 on this. And I'm trying to figure out why it's as is. What is wrong with it? But it was, um, yeah, with the mark on it was Chippendale. And I thought, ooh, okay, that sounds fancy. Chippendale makes really fancy stuff. But when I looked it up, not really. Not really a good buy. So it's something that I didn't get because it, I was surprised at how little it was selling for. Maybe like $15, $17. So it got to stay behind as well. All right. Dishes and such. Little cute little cute things anything up here don't see anything over there now this is a really cute Starbucks mug a ceramic one with the the uh, balloon however this also seven dollars is what they wanted on this and it I think I saw solds for maybe 9.99 not a lot so as cute as it was, and as hopeful as I was, <laughs> it did not end up coming home either. It probably would have been something for me to drink my coffee out of. However, I drink a lot more coffee than that, <laughs> and it, it wasn't gonna cut. wasn't gonna cut it for me. So the next area that I hit, I see wrapping paper and bags, and I had a really great find years ago at an auction where I got a whole big tub full of this flat wrapping paper for like $12 or something and I made so much money off of it that I'm always looking for it now because certain patterns can sell for a, a lot of money and I sold most of mine on Etsy maybe you know for crafting purposes or whatnot but I mean there were some that I sold that were anywhere from $19 for a sheet to $35 for, for some of the patterns. These are just a couple on uh, eBay right now. That's, this one sold for $15 for that one, and then someone sold a lot of some for $24. So, you know, especially if you find them, like I did when I, I got that big tub of them at the auction, oh my gosh, you know, I mean, it was a really great find for me. All right, so at the checkout behind the counter, we see this pair of Doc Martens, which uh, she's going to bring them over in just a second. And we had to get her to go to the back to get a price check for us. So they were wanting $19.99. And I showed her on the heel, not this one, but on the back of the other one where the Achilles tendon is. It was really chewed up. So they ended up giving them to us for $15.00. I couldn't find another pair like them. There was a pair that are boots that are a collab that Doc Martin did, but I couldn't find these, so I'm really kind of excited. Even though they're messed up, 
I think they're going to do pretty well. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to list them for. I might price them pretty high and then just see because people with their docks, they love their docks. I mean, I know there's a pair that I used to have that I would pay a lot of money to get again, and I can't find them for the life of me. So if they're, if this is a pair that somebody else would love, then there she's coming back to let us know <laughs> because they were messed up what we could what we could do on them so i'm pretty excited about these i'm not exactly sure again like i said what i'm going to price them at but it should be a lot crossing fingers all right you guys if you enjoyed this video i am going to link a playlist up here for you and this is a video that youtube thinks you will enjoy and if you haven't yet please consider subscribing to the channel and i will see you on the next one bye